and Megan Henry. I would first like to thank my sister for that wonderful introduction. I would like to thank the committee for inviting me to speak this morning. I would also like to thank the pastor of this church and the moderator, Reverend Isaac Manning, Jr. The theme today is Seasons of Celebration. Celebration is the action of marking one's pleasure at an important event or occasion by engaging in enjoyable, typical social activity. When my mom and I talked about this topic, it was interesting that in our lives, we typically live and prepare all year for some type of celebration, whether it be a birthday, sports championship, concert, graduation, or any other life milestone. Celebrations or seasons of celebrations are what keep life interesting. Preparation is the action of this process of making ready or being made ready for use or consideration. Before we can celebrate anything, a lot of work is usually done. In life, you will always be preparing for seasons of celebration. Ecclesiastes 3 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There is a time or season for everything we will do in life. Since we are kids, I like to think that we are in the season of preparation. Since we are in the process of preparing ourselves for the adult part of our lives, what we choose to do in this season will dictate what our adult life may look like in the future. I believe that success comes from belief. What I mean is, if you want something, you have to believe you can achieve it and work hard to reach your goal. You will get what you want if you work hard for it. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 4 says, The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. Yes. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 says, A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Both of these verses point out that it's important for people to work hard and the benefit of the hard work will pay off. Yes. Yes. It is important to note that success does not always equal financial success. Amen. Money and riches are important, yes. but those are things that the world would measure success by. Yes. Success yes. is more than that. Yes. The biblical meaning of success says we are to take the talents and opportunity God gives us mm -hmm. and to make the most of them. So, to be successful in biblical terms is to make the most of all your opportunities and please God. Yes. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 says, What does the Lord your God require from you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to love Him. Amen. And to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Success brings joy and happiness in your life. Everyone feels good when they're doing well at something. To be successful, we must have faith in God. This is important because we will have hard times in our life. Yes. We will need to have faith in God to see us through the hard times. Right. Even though you believe in God and do good for God, doesn't mean you will not have tough times. Since yes. 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 we have faith and believe in God, we have the power to change bad times into joyous times. Yes. The secret to Christian joy is to believe in, to believe in what God says in his word and act upon it. Amen. Faith that is not based on the word of God is not faith at all. Amen. It is superstition. Amen. Joy that is not because of faith is not joy at all. It will only be a good feeling that will soon disappear. Amen. Faith based on the word of God will produce joy that will weather the bad times in life that we all may face. When me and my mom researched for this speech today, I started to wonder about what God wants from me. Right. Have you ever wondered about what God wants from you? Yeah. As kids, we can always come up with things that we want from God and our parents. But have you ever thought about what God wants from you? Yeah. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 seem to answer this question. The first verse says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Yes. Yes. Holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Yes. What does this verse mean? I think in this verse we are being told to live our lives so that every part of our life is pleasing to God. Amen. It is not okay to look good on the outside. If you, you have to be a good person on the inside. Amen. around you, but you do not feel like it. This verse reminded me of a situation that happened in my class. I remember in class, a boy cheated off my test paper. 
I did not tell on him because I knew in the end he's only hurting himself. Yeah, right. He may look good to everyone else because he cheated and got a good result. Right. But he knows that he cheated and he will have to pay the consequences for that action. Right. Right. Hiding behind the truth will only hurt you in the end. Woo. Try your best to do the right thing. Amen. Remember when we lie, we only hurt ourselves. Yeah. Oftentimes a little problem can become a big problem. All right. yeah. We are not truthful with ourselves and our parents. Yes, the second verse in Romans chapter 12 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve of what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The first part of this verse means for you to be the Christian person you are. It is not okay for Christian people to be the same as people that do not know any better. When people see you, they should be able to see that you are different, but different in a good way. People should see God in the way you carry yourself, by the way you speak, and by the way you think. Amen. The second part of this verse 2 says, Then you will be able to test and approve of what God's will is. His perfect, good, and pleasing will. God's will is a question many of us wonder about. How do you know if your actions or decisions are according to God's will? The best way to discover God's will for your life is to, one, be obedient. Two, give your life to God. And three, remember to love God. Do not work hard and focus on only trying to figure out what God wants and just forget to love God and be obedient. Mm -hmm. I, found that I found that the will of God is a combination of obedience, belief, and love of God, so do not forget that. Just think about it. Does it not make sense that God would know what's better than we know ourselves? Amen. Especially since he already knows our purpose. Mm -hmm. Obedience is the true test of our love and the secret to discovering God's will for our life. Ungodly things or crazy stuff are the enemy of our soul. Yes. Crazy stuff keeps us from being successful. Yes. Crazy stuff to me are things Satan would like because his mission is to stop God, good people and God's people from doing God's will. Yes. God's people are not perfect and mistakes mm. and temporary distractions may steer us off our journey to live by God's will. Yeah. But always remember that Satan can never win or defeat you if you are obedient to Christ. Mm. Do not be afraid to trust God with your life. Amen. I know some people may get scared that their plans might change. Mm. Just remember, God's plans are so much better than yeah. anything yeah. that ever yeah. Verse 13 says, When the He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth, and He will tell you what is yet to come. This verse means that the key to knowing God's will is to be obedient to the guidance of the Holy Spirit of truth. If you are willing to trust and obey God and live a holy life, God will reveal Himself to you and direct your steps as a way of life. I know that it's easy to say just obey God. The world has so many crazy things going on. As kids, we experience crazy things while listening to music, watching television, on the computer, and just going to school. Sometimes, sometimes no matter how hard you try, you cannot avoid crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Crazy stuff is anything that we know God will not like. For instance, some popular dances like twerking. I'm in fifth grade and kids have already started using bad language and bullying. <laughs> James chapter 3 verse 10 says, from the same mouth comes blessing and curse. Yes. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Uh, <laughs> when you are tempted to participate in negative behaviors to fit in, remember that God wants us to be not like other people of the world. Yes. Remember Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We usually know without being told when we are doing something we should not be doing. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Romans chapter 16, verse 12 says, Don't let sin reign in your mortal body. That means do not let sin rule your life. Mm -hmm. Make good choices. The poet Robert Frost tells us in his poem that choices can be made can make all the difference. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Mm -hmm. Two roads diverging in a yellow wood. And sorry, I cannot travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood. And look down, one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and once wear, though as for the passing there had warned them really about the same, and both that morning equally lay, and leaves no step that trod it black. Oh, and I kept for another day, yet knowing how way leads to, on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I should be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverging in the wood, and I to the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. I hope you've learned to trust and to put your life into God's hands and believe in Him for years to come. 
Taking part in this speech and researching the information gave me a better understanding of God and His will. I hope you learned a lot, because I certainly have. Good luck in life and stay on the good path of life. Thank you for your time. Amen.